So today, November 1st, 2022, 7.35, we're starting the City Council Select Committee meeting to study barriers to serving on city boards and commission. Uh, this meeting is being recorded um, and we're gonna do the roll call. Beth? Javier? Here. Jamila? Can you hear me? Oh, now I can. Oh, here. Uh, Susan, not here at the moment. Gwen is also not here at the moment. Garrick, you said is def definitely not here. Cynthia? Yes. And Jana? Yes. Awesome. Excellent. I'm able to um, I'm sorry? Cool. So, yes, I yeah, I went back to the list and I counted. We need four out of seven. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, as I said, this meeting, it's been recorded. Um, and because the, and also at the same time, this meeting is subject to open meeting law and to public records. So if you want to watch this meeting later, it should be uploaded and keep it by the city of Northampton. Uh, we're going to go to the first, uh, second agenda item, which is a public comment. Um, I'm going to open the public comment for anybody who wants to address the committee. During public comment, um, you are gonna have, depending on the amount of people that we get, it's the amount of time that you are gonna have. Um, if we don't have a lot of people, probably people, uh, the ones attending in Polycommon will have more time. Um, I see one hand, uh, Megan Pai. Hi everyone, can you hear me? So I am, um... Glad to be here. I'm the chair of the Northampton Human Rights Commission. Um, I've met some of you before. Um, um, and you might know, as you probably know, Susan McDonald, one of her members is a, a human rights commissioner and um, she's one of our younger members. Um, she's been keeping us um, updated on your progress um, because she shares back your work with us at each of our monthly meetings. Um, so we really strongly uh, support your work. Uh, we've long been interested in uh, certain issues of barriers to service um, because uh, most of our HRC members came on in the last three years when I've been in leadership. Um, we've been able to track how each member has joined, um, whether by uh, recruitment, whether they were recruited by invitation of someone in government or um, having applied without um, any sort of uh, uh, internal sponsorship. And as far as I know, four of our seven current members um, applied on their own. Um, we have, a, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time and we do have this range of idiosyncratic experiences just with um, uh, applying and recruiting that, um, we would like to share with you in, in your surveys. Um, we also realized that we all came on with uh, very different levels of understanding about uh, the municipal government structure, um, you know, the missions of our boards and uh, commissions uh, beyond, beyond what's on the city's um, web pages. Um, and just even the general uh, procedures and norms. Um, and that's really due to a lack of formal onboarding that uh, beyond the, the swearing in by Pam Powers and, and the OML training that we all do online. So um, on the HRC, we formed a subcommittee uh, to, and we met once to draft a handbook for new commissioners um, that we hope can be um, helpful to our members, but also be adapted to for all the standing boards and commissions. Um, so about a page and a half to two pages of this is fairly um, dry boilerplate information. Um, and I guess I won't be able to 
to share it with you today, um, but um, I would like to return at a later meeting um, to do so. We're going to really need your input um, on this draft and hopefully once it's finalized, uh, you will um, want to incorporate it um, into your report to the council and mayor. So um, I can speak longer, but um, I won't, um, but I'd like to um, turn my camera off and um, perhaps observe your meeting, if I may. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much, Megan. Can you, so we just got in one of our members, which is Wen Nabad. Can you sort of quickly sort of talk about um, what what your commission come just just for for the sake of when being able to hear because I I think it's important. Okay, so I'm here, and Joanne knows I'm on the HRC. Um, the current uh, we currently have seven members, and um, we have a subcommittee that drafted a a handbook for new commissioners and board members. Um, the city currently does not provide one, um, and I think a lot of uh, the current boards and commissions do not have any sort of um, formal onboarding processes. So um, this is a document that's about four pages that I, I won't be able to share right now, but um, we like to have your input on it. Um, I could just talk a little bit about some of the elements of it. Um, like we started with, I'd like to start with kind of an organizational chart of the city government. Um, I've inquired and one doesn't exist. Um, uh, talk about the strong mayor form of government that we have, um, the role of the mayor and the city council and the boards and commissions. Um, there are, you know, the conflict of interest that uh, we do and the, the swearing in processes. And there, there are going to be a lot of hyperlinks to um, all of this all of these um, elements. Um, you know, we describe kind of the roles of the commissioners, the chair, the vice chair, and the members um, and their general duties. Um, I have a section, and then after the first page and a half, um, I have um, a, another page, you know, dedicated to just our particular commission, um, human rights commission, you know, what are the human rights, um, you know, um, just our, a bit of our history and, you know, our uh, authorities and responsibilities um, and what we what actually we do not do um, as well. Uh, there's a page of brief biographies. Um, information about our meeting schedule, um, our meeting format, you know, what constitutes a quorum, sample agenda and minutes. Um, so that's all, you know, fairly, you know, boilerplate information that unfortunately isn't um, available um, any, anywhere currently, um, but I think is useful for a lot of, um, a lot of uh, newer commissioners, especially the ones that do not have, um, do not have uh, internal support or networks within the government. Um, we also have a page about of our current topics of focus. The previous um, Megan, um, I would I would like to as, as an update that for when that thing, I think that's good, good, really good, and I really appreciate the work that you and the Human Rights Commission are doing. Um, and, and probably new businesses, I'm gonna, and when we are towards at the end of this meeting, we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna propose inviting you as the chair of the Human Rights Commission to present in depth what you're presenting. I think, over, like I said, a lot of overlapping with the conversations that we're having, like huge amount of overlapping, mm -hmm. um, including the centralization of information, right? And, and accessibility firms. So I really appreciate uh, what you're doing, and and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. So, if there's anybody else who would like to um, to do public comment, 
now that we're gonna move to with our uh, forward with our agenda. Perfect. Um, excellent. So um, Beth sent the agenda, uh, the agenda, so the agenda items today. So the the first one is more. Uh, we're gonna move to approval of minutes for previous meetings. Everybody was able to take a look to all the 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 minutes that uh, Beth sent today. Excellent. So um, let me take a look to my email so I can. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to take a motion to approve um, the minutes that were sent today by Beth, which are the ones from last two or three meetings. Let me see. I, I move to approve the minutes of September 13th and September 26th. Yes. A second. Beth? Any discussion? Uh, Javier? Yep. Jamila? Can't hear you, Jamila. Yes. Oh, thank you. Susan? Uh, not here. Um, Gwen? Yes. Garrick is not here. Cynthia. Yes. And Jenna. Yes. Excellent. Minutes approved. So we are up to date with minutes. Um, so we're going to get into the general discussion items. So, uh, so I'm going to share my screen and show you where we are with the uh with a form let me uh let me before i do this let me select excel mm -hmm. everybody can see this so um so far this is where we are uh, it's almost done. As we talked in our last meeting, uh, I was uh, we were we, me and Jamila with sort of a cluster of everything. So you're going to see things that Jenna wrote, Cynthia wrote, I wrote, Wen wrote, etc. <laughs> so, um, so the first page we have the explanation, we have the link to uh, be able, for people to be able to read the charts and to be able to read what the city council passed. We have uh, bolded in in black the you know the warning sign about um, how you're going to be able to access I mean, all the information that you're sending, and one of the things that I'm doing in the settings, uh, Jenna, in your notes, you make a pretty good note in relationship to needing or not needing a Gmail account to be able to do this, right? So I tweak it the settings, and as far as I know people with just the link would be able to access it without, without needing to be able to leave uh, uh, a Gmail account, that Gmail uh, as, as a trade. Uh, the way how we did it, we, we did a sort of, we branch it as a tree, right? So depending what you choose, you are gonna get different, different path. And for the sake of data, rather than dabbling questions or dabbling, you know, uh, multiple choice, what I did is I have the same section merging together because the chair co-chair and current and former member of committee, there is a lot of overlapping. And if we double it, we're gonna get one, one, one cluster of data here and one cluster of data here. Rather than if we keep it together, we just have that one. So we're gonna start with the co-chair. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm gonna, so I work a fair amount of this one, and the problem was that I tried to keep working today. I got to a point that everything looked just the same for me. So I'm gonna ask somebody to just to go through it in there when they, uh, somebody, a volunteer of you guys that then just go through it and write comments to me and just send it to me. Um, so we're gonna go co-chair. So 
like it's a lot of uh, sort of narrative questions, short narrative questions. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go slow with this, right? When there is a vacancy in your committee, what is the process for filing the vacancy? Do you make any recommendations? Does the mayor office consult with you to determine what qualification, interest, background, potential candidates should have? Does the mayor office share the application pool, the applicant pool? If not, would you like them to? Um, how is the attendance at your meeting? Do you ever have to cancel a meeting due to lack of quorum? I'm going to add technical problems, cancellations. So I'm going to add that later. Uh, do you have any form of informal advertising for the vacancy? Do you feel your members are actively engaged in the committee? Have you attended a special type of trainings in your position as the chair of the board committee? And I think this one is extremely good uh, as, a, as a question. Uh, we talk about the lack of mentorship, but also the lack of sort of, you, you're just serving in a commission and there you go, right? So I, I think this address a little bit that, um, do you think the members of your community are representative of the Northampton community? Excellent question. Do you think members should be compensated for serving in the committee? Uh, do you have any other comments on the process selecting approving? Remember that we are sort of jumping in the chair track here. So all this, uh, all these questions are specifically for, for a chair. So please explain your answer above in relation to your experience serving on city commissions. Uh, we're going next. And here is where we find the overlap with the, with the track of the chair, right? Uh, well, mm, uh, the tree branch is not working. Okay, ignore this one. Jesus, ignore that one. Uh, uh, here, how do you think the city of Narhanto can improve the application process? Let me write a note that the branching is not working in that section. Uh, if you wish to upload logger testimony relevant to the, to the select committee, please do it here. If you have served on a board as a member more than five years, have you considered serving in other boards? How long have you served on city committees? Do you feel valued and listened in your committee? Can you expand on your previous answer? Do you find a scheduling time to, to, uh, to meet, to make the meeting difficult? Uh, and this is one of the key things that I think, Jenna, you pointed out, which uh, what barriers or challenges have you explained to your service? And I think this one is one of the most important sections that we're gonna have. Um, if you so we have a pretty extensive list if uh if you guys take a look to that um i would like sort of you know i'm gonna send this out to you so you, everybody can take a look to it uh and email me with any comments as long as that email does say it's not being shared between you guys and only share with me that's fine uh when can you send that to me so i can look at it from where I am, or should you not do that? Um, while while you're looking, I can, at I, can send, I can say it to you later. Okay. Um, cool. How do you find about the board commission to which you apply? What motivates you to apply? How do you hear about the vacancy on this committee? How do you think the city of Northampton can improve the application process? How do you think the city of Northampton may resolve to service? And now we have from strongly disagree to strongly agree section. My experience of applying to serve on a board of commission was positive. Five, strong disagree. One, strongly agree. The application process was transparent. The application process was efficient. I knew what to expect throughout the application process. I knew what the city was looking for in new members of the board commission. I felt respected throughout the application process. Uh, the application process made me excited to serve. You know, use this page to elaborate if you answer or, uh, on your answers about if desire. <laughs> and the final section of this one is, you know, I, I restate the same than at the beginning. Uh, because we're, you know, we're asking, you know, if there's anything else. 
And so, because it's, it's, it's sort of the closing statement, I just wanted to be able to restate that. Remember that whatever you write, whatever places, name, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera has, will become fully regular. Okay. The only thing missing on this is a, tr a really short survey of uh, gender, age, uh, profession, professional capacity, th that really short survey that is gonna come right after submitting this one. That's the only okay. one missing. Okay, okay. Right? And okay. Jenna and Gwen sent me sort of suggestions for that one, which is a uh, general sort of general short survey. Um, if we go back, so this is a chair branch and I sort of got that I thought was working perfect. So if you go to the applicant that has not been appointed, you have a total different set of questions, right? How do you find out about the board commission to which you apply? What motivate you to apply? How do you hear about the vacancy? How do you think the city on our hand can improve the application process? How do you think the city on our hand to make residence barriers to service in residence? So it's a different, it's a totally different set of, uh, of questions but it's still, what it's what it's sort of making it a little complicated is the I the, I'm I'm, I'm going to restate this. Uh, we didn't double any question. It's different to branches coming in right. and out, right? Right. So when people are filing this one, the data that we're getting is just one solid data of this exact point. Yeah. Um, comments. I'm going to open the floor. Um, and being honest with you, I tried to work more today on this, and after 10 minutes, everything just looked freaking the same for me. <laughs> I when I could understand why it would seem like it was looking the same because there's so many questions, and it feels like we're asking it the same question in different ways, but we're actually trying to get at some very precise information. Um, I feel like I haven't looked at this in such a, a little while. So, but um, I like the way that it was set up at the end um, on the chair um, where it listed, like you could check a box. I liked all of those options. I thought that was very, very good. And I mean, it looks good to me. I mean, I'm sure we can fine tune it any number of ways. Uh, Cynthia. Uh, yeah, um, just I just need a review of the rationale. Why are we sending it to a chair and a vice chair? And do all committees commissions have a vice chair? So the so the reason why we chose three it's because um, we want to figure it out if chairs or vice chairs are being consulted directly in the process, the level of involvement that they are having or they may not be having, right? Uh, a while, you know, I don't, I don't know where. Uh, let's say that I'm a chair of a committee, and tomorrow a new member just shows up, and I didn't know about it. So that's the reason why we have a chair and vice chair track, because uh, uh, pro probably the level of communication between the chair and vice chair with city council and the mayor it's absolutely different than the one with uh, all the other members, right? And in full disclosure. My level of communication with Jim, it's weekly, uh, every two days, probably. So it, it certainly there is a difference, right? And after that, you have the second option, which is people who have served or, or serving, which the time commitment is different. Um, the things that they have to deal in the commission are not necessarily prepping the agenda. Uh, so. Megan Pike is a really good example of a chair that actually wants to have a manual for anybody who's coming in. That's that's literally it's not something that just uh, um, uh, not necessarily a, a just a board a committee member would do, right? That certainly in this case with Megan was an initiative from the chair. Um, right, but I, I just don't see the distinction between chair and vice chair. It, we have two uh, different because because if if so if Jamil is filling it out and sees chair. She's yeah. going to say, oh, that's not me. I'm a vice chair. I'm not going to do it. So that's the only reason why. It's but she's, she would, Jim Miller would be a member then. I mean, I'm, 
I don't know. I just but, uh, but she would get but the, that the thing she would get if she goes to just members, she wouldn't get the questions about the communication with city council and the mayor. You, yeah, okay. I, I mean, you're assuming that that's what happens in the commissions, but that's okay. Fair enough. I won't, uh, I won't belabor in, in, it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. It's an assumption. Let's put it yeah. that And then the other, um, I found it very valuable that Megan was here. Um, and she said something very interesting. Um, four out of seven of the members were, I forget how she categorized them. Um, oh, they volunteered on their own, right? Is there a way maybe we, do we have that question in there? Um, when we go to the members, um, how did you, maybe I think we had something like, how did you hear about it? But I, I thought that was a valuable piece of data to see who volunteered and who was kind of like nudged in. <laughs> okay, we can, I, I can trick that. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on, hold on a minute. Yes, absolutely. It, and the other thing Megan talked about was onboarding. And I think, as I saw the, the survey go by quickly, but I'll look at it again, we kind of covered that. Like, how did you, will you, I don't think we use the word onboarding. Do you feel but, that it would be better to use the word onboarding? I don't, I, I'm not sure. But as long as we're covering like, hey, were you introduced to this committee? How were you, okay. you know, taught about how the city runs, et cetera? So can you repeat the first one that you said? That was about. Um, well, how did you have? Volunteer. Let's say, did you have an onboarding process when you joined the committee? Okay, and the first one was about the, what? Did you volunteer for this or? Yeah. yeah. Did you volunteer? And then I think if you didn't, there's a variety of other ways you could have gotten in, so to speak. And I don't yeah. know if we want to parse that. And she also mentioned there's a lot of idiosyncrasies. And when she said that, I was like, wow, I really want to know what those are. And maybe, you know, on a one-on-one, -on -one, that would give us some more information yes, as to fill, fill in some of the questions. Just a thought. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I think that the onboarding, I think it's going to be about sort of rephrasing specifically the one, which is almost like a recruitment. I mean, the, no, no, the volunteer recruited and the onboarding also can be rephrased. Uh, Jenna. Uh, a couple of things. One, building on Cynthia's question about the kind of chair, co-chair, I am the vice chair of the planning board and I receive zero special communications from city council or even from the planning office. I only receive them when I'm being tapped in my role as vice chair to lead a meeting. So I, I, uh, that is what it is. But if I answered that question and said, yes, I'm a vice chair and got two pages of questions that I have no answers to, I'm not sure quite how I would handle it. So it should do with that what you will, but I don't no. think that it's necessarily the case that all vice or co-chairs get the same information that the chair does. Yeah, and, and also I, I'm not assuming that all chairs have to talk to a city councilor every two days, right? Right. The problem we appreciate is that, that if, you do that. <laughs> if 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 we start, there are so many branches that we can do. <laughs> so well, I, I I think my thought is that just saying it's for sure the chair is having more communications with staff and or with city council than other members. So to me, it would be fine to just say chairs and members and not try to put so, co-chairs or vice chairs in the middle. So that's the thing, right? That's So for example, when me and Booker were chair and co-chair of the subcommittee that we were, we were communicating all the, because we both pretty much acted as chairs. We were talking with city council all the time. So I think it's it's changes dramatically from how people want to overtake that role, which you know it speaks also to the lack of. I mean, I have never read a manual in Northampton that says what the chair or vice chair has to do or not to do. Right. Um, you know, and I think that changes dramatically from one from one commission to subcommittee or whatever it is to the next one. Cynthia. Oh, sorry, sorry. That wasn't me. 
Uh, following up on, on um, uh, Jenna's comment too. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Board of Health. The only thing I do is run a meeting if the chair is absent. Um, and, um, and if that chair is absent for an extended period of time, then I would work for somebody outside the committee. But, um, but the one thing I do wanna make sure if we keep this vice chair thing, once the vice chair answers these questions, like myself as vice chair of Board of Health, I don't wanna get bounced out of answering the member question because of the way things are bridged or, you know, as, as you said, that it takes you to another route as a vice chair. So I'm still viewing the, the vice chair as a member, but I think your experience has been different, Javier. Yeah, it, but what I would say, I mean, I can tweak it. So you are not, you don't get like a, like a bunch of questions that you shouldn't. So, um, I, I lost my train of thoughts. Um, this is the thing. In a full disclosure, my opinion and my feeling right now, specifically with, with chair and vice chair, as far as I know, based on my limited knowledge, is that there, there, there is no communication for the administration with neither the chair of the vice chair when a new member is gonna is being evaluated on a pool of members it's being evaluated, right? So I want to be able to say in a report the findings asking those questions to the chair and the vice chair, because my point at the end of the day is that if one of the findings is that the administration is not communicating with the two people running the committee. I do feel strongly that our one recommendation should be that they should be communicating and not just somebody new just showing up out of nowhere in the next meeting. Right? And, and that communication has to happen with the chair and the vice chair. So that's that's sort of my 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 strongest reason for that. Uh when Um, I'm just thinking that we're midway into talking about this, the, the, the chair and the vice chair thing, but something just popped up in my brain about something that Megan had mentioned. Um, for me, um, or just in terms of accessibility, um, sometimes I have to like keep reading things over and over again before I understand what everything is all about. And of course, I also lose everything. I lose a lot of things sometimes, like they get misplaced or, you know, it just happens. But um, having a way to download descriptions and things like that. Um, anyway, I just want to throw that out there. I know it's very random. Jenna. <clears throat> um, I'll just make one other comment about the chair vice chair question and then move on to a different topic if, if that works for everybody, um, which is that uh, I, I hear your point. I suspect that I, I, I'm sure you're right that by and large chairs are not being communicated with when people are applying. I'm not sure that we need to ask every different chair in the city that same kind of set of questions to get that answer. So I feel like that data might, we can still make that point and make a recommendation based on it possibly without asking the question here. But I, I think we'll be fine either way. I think what I'm trying to avoid is like, again, if I got this set of question as a vice chair, my answers would be, I don't know for two pages. Um, so, but I think that, that is what it is. So that's interesting, right? For, because for me, it's an issue if the vice chair doesn't know. Because that's mean that the roles are not being, it, it's what I said. I mean, neither me or Jamila got a manual to tell us how to chair anything or vice chair, vice chair anything. So if the vice chair answers is I don't know, or we never talk about this with the chair, that's something that we wanna know. <laughs> I mean, based in my opinion, again, this is my opinion. Can I ask, would you want to know that it was a vice chair specifically saying that versus a chair? Um, well, because yeah, the way because, that the survey is currently constructed, yes. it just says chair slash co-chair. So you wouldn't be able to parse unless somebody specified it in their answers, whether it was the chair or the co-chair saying, I don't know. Well, you know, we, we can, we can, I, but I, I think that making it a cluster is better. Um, 
making that cluster is better. I mean, for me, the the main the main thing is that the communication between the I mean, Cynthia, you wrote a tremendous report with your co-chair, right? The level of communication that you guys have to have was massive. Being honest, I do not think that that's across the board. And the understanding that it's if the chair and vice chair or co-chair has a chair responsibility with the committee, I don't think it's widely understood. So I think it's, it's sort of important to get sort of a sense of it. Jamila. Yeah, I, I agree with you that I don't think it's understood and that could be a part of like onboarding and trying to figure out, I mean, that could be a barrier to serving as vice chair or chair is not knowing exactly what that role is. And I think in every committee, it's different. That's also, it's, it's not consistent throughout each committee. I think the roles are, are, there's no definition for each role for each committee. And I think that's, that's an issue. Cynthia. Yeah, it's also making the assumption that you must have a vice chair. Nowhere is that written anywhere. Um, that's just a collective decision of the group. Uh, something like the police commission that is a long-term thing, got to have a vice chair. Something that's a one-shot deal, maybe not so much. But I just go back to, please, 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 if the vice chair answers, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want that survey to be dumped out without getting to talking about the vice chair being as a member. If, if this is going to be an issue. So I just want to make sure it's sorted properly because the vice chair is a member. Well, the chair is also a member, right? So, uh, so uh, oh my freaking God. Um, sorry, we're in the middle of a campaign. Um, when? Well, I'm just thinking that, um, you know, we can we can give vice chairs both both of those. Um, I think you said the dilemma is that it would be like, but they're different questions. So like if if you're a vice chair, please respond to this first. Or or you could at the end of that survey have another click for them to click through and answer the questionnaire as a member if they choose. Yeah, I mean, that's that's at least an option. Jenna, does a new hand? Yeah, I mean, I think if the branching is working correctly, we can address, you know, the issue that Cynthia has raised to make sure that vice chairs and chairs still get the member questions, which are still relevant to them. Um, my other and bigger concern is that this survey is for chairs and even for members is very long. Um, to be oh, honest, yeah. if I received this survey, I would probably bail on page two. Um, the number of questions and the number of them that are open-ended questions, as opposed to, you know, the rank and bullet questions, the number of pages, not knowing how far I am through it. Um, it's, it's a pretty big ask to ask people to complete all of it. And so I think on the one hand, those who do complete it will get a really good set of information. On the other hand, I think we're gonna get many fewer uh, responses. And I also think it's going to skew toward people who have the time to complete the survey, which also may skew toward some things we already know about uh, uh, bias in committee members, such as retired folks and people who have you know just more time than say, you know, people working multiple jobs or young parents and so forth, who we'd really like to hear from those people who are participating about what's enabling their participation. So I, I just really worry about the length of the survey. I, I, I think all of the questions are great and valid and I would love to get answers to all of them. But I think on balance, I'd rather have more answers on fewer questions than fewer answers on more questions. So I think as we're, uh, it sounds like Javier, you're planning on sending out the survey to everybody and welcoming feedback from us individually via email. Um, so I, I hope that everybody will sort of take a, a pretty uh, aggressive approach to sort of 
consolidating as much as we can to make it a lower uh, a lower lift for respondents because I think we'll just get a much better and more actionable pool of information that way. Um, I also think that trying to sort of sequence the questions in a way that's um, uh, a little bit more coherent might help. So thinking about uh, the app, you know, let's think for first about, um, you know, just a member talking about, okay, first the application process, how did you find out about it? What happened? What was your application process? Then what was your serving process? So that their questions are sort of grouped together, which I think will also help since some of the questions are, as somebody pointed out, um, may seem at first glance to be sort of, oh, didn't I already address this, but are actually getting at something slightly different. So if they're located near one another, you can see, oh, okay, I already answered this, but what they're getting out of this new question is that. So I think kind of bunching, conceptually bunching them will also help people to kind of build, um, uh, answer the questions, build a better narrative, and again, give us better, better data. So I don't think it makes sense for us to sort of do that work of consolidation and, and um, grouping here, but I think as people go through it on their own, that would be really useful um, to just get better results. Excellent. So, as I said in the last and previous meeting, we're gonna we were gonna run in a beautiful problem, which is gonna have to we're we're gonna get way more questions, way more bulk, and we're gonna have to run in the beautiful problem of having to cut things down, right? And we talked a little bit for the last two meetings about the length being one of the main issues of the, of the survey. So me and Jamila intentionally did it in this way because it's easier to see the big picture of this and then start trimming down the tree rather than, you know, rather than, because in this way we have a full picture of all the questions and concern that all the members of this committee have risen, right? So now what we have to do is uh, cluster questions, just put questions together, decide if a question or it's better having as a narrative or just black and white or um, graded. Uh, and that's where we are right now. So that should not take a lot of time, right? Um, and this is where I need help. So um, members can work on this independently. We cannot work this jointly. So what I would need, it's, it's sort of a, a set of eyes. I can work on this in the next two days, sort of having in mind what Jenna said, what Wen said, what uh, Jamila said and Cynthia said. And after that, send it to somebody to review it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of need a volunteer to put that a set of eyes on that um, because as I said I tried to do it today and after after ten minutes I was just everything looks like just the same for me. Jenna, I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> Excellent. So I will send it to you by. Uh, Thursday, I'm going to send it to you with, with as much changes based on what we talk. Uh, and I took a lot of notes in relation to that, and we can move forward. Cynthia. Uh, just one more thing. Um, because, I was, because I was so impressed that Megan was here um, after we get the survey and do the results, et cetera, um, it's always nice to have that little qualitative conversation. And so we might want to have a key um, board chair come to our meeting. We have a lot of meetings, you know, maybe we'll sprinkle them in here and there and just say, hey, so what do you think about this? And just have that conversation. It can take five, 10 minutes, put it on the agenda. Um, just give us a little more insight into what's really kind of happening behind the quantitative analysis. Uh, so just a suggestion. I'm not saying we need to do that, but, um, or vote on it, but I think it might um, be value added for us. Awesome. When? Um, I just want to make sure that I understand understand what Cynthia just said. 
Um, so instead of like having someone write out this narrative per se, maybe just inviting them to come speak and share their experience with us uh, or, you know, meeting with people and sort of, you know, just interviewing them and what? But Gwen, no, not instead of. In, okay, in addition you. to, if we felt we wanted to get underneath some data. Okay. You know, that, okay. That's not instead of, we, we really should use the data as our kind of jumping off point. I'm sorry, Javier. You okay. No, no, I, I was gonna give you the, the word so you would be able sort of to, whatever. yeah. Um, let's see where we are in, uh, excellent. So we have a plan. By Thursday, I'm gonna send uh, so a redrafted version to Jenna to take a look, to trim it down. And after that next meeting, we're sending it up. Excellent, good for you. And you know, having in mind that Google Forms is for free, it's pretty usable. Let me tell you that. Uh, cool, let's move to assignment updates. So we, oh, we have one and one, Jenna and Cynthia. Do you wanna talk a little bit if you had I start conversations about Jenna, you and um, I want to say Susan, that's right. Yes. Uh, have talked about a little bit about your assignment and, and, the, and, the, and what you're working on and the same Cynthia, if, if you haven't, that's absolutely fine, but I just want to keep, keep us on sort of on the mood of reporting or giving the option to report every meeting. Jenna. Yes, um, happy, to, happy to report. So yes, Mara and I met a week or so ago and um, we sort of tried to clarify, we used the first conversation just to sort of set a direction for ourselves um, and wanted to kind of share what we came up with, with um, back with the committee before sort of moving ahead much further. Um, can I, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Um, give me one second. Uh, da, 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 that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So this is sort of what we, um, came up with. Um, uh, so first, um, our goal to um, compile academic research and community case studies that discuss barriers to board and commission service, possible efforts to diminish ex existing um, discrimination and barriers and their outcomes. So basically what is kind of the um, academic research and efforts that have been undertaken in other communities sort of tell us that we might be able to apply here in Northampton. We then identified kind of five areas, broad areas where we might do some research. Um, we recognize that the, on the board, we have talked about a lot of different possibilities. And I think one of the things that remains to be seen is sort of how far we can get into this. Um, so we came up with five um, that are minus, uh, this one, uh, for some reason, my computer doesn't want to. Hold on. Um, okay, more or less in kind of order of what we saw as priorities. So first, just what does kind of academic literature tell us about barriers, not necessarily, or not probably specific to Northampton, but kind of in general. Um, what are, and, and again, kind of case studies about what other regions and cities have done. Two, um, what are kind of positive best practices in um, outreach and in creating an environment for kind of satisfactory public participation. Um, we were remarking on the fact that um, for many people, I'm thinking in particular about the planning board that a lot of people come forward to speak um, in opposition to a project, we don't have a limit on the length of um, public comment either at the beginning of the meeting or as part of hearings, but nonetheless, I think a lot of people come forward, they um, speak briefly, 
the chair says, thank you. The discussion moves on. Nobody really addresses what they said. And the entire experience is incredibly unsatisfactory. And so when those folks might think about, oh, is that something I want to be involved in? If I were one of them, I would probably say no. But there's a really good body of literature around how to actually improve that and improve the experience of participation. So what can we kind of find out from that that we can translate into um, into people wanting to kind of step forward even more and participate in the way that all of us are here. Um, I think both of these, we need to recognize that um, in the kind of initial, just short burst of research that both Mara and I did, um, there is a lot of research about public participation in the form of public comment and a lot about um, uh, working uh, as an employee and or as an elected official, much less specifically about working in volunteer service boards and commissions, but I think we, there's still a lot to be learned from both of those areas. So I think these are sort of the two main areas where we'd like to start um, and um, to see what we can learn. And then if and as we have time, we identified kind of three other um, sort of more um, specific issues to look into. Um, financial or in-kind compensation, such as, you know, providing daycare or transportation, pulling on the Amherst case study there, um, how um, online resources, meaning kind of the shift to remote meetings, um, have promoted or inhibited um, diversity of participation, and similarly, how language translation um, resources have or have not impacted kind of the representation on committees. And we have a little bit of a case study in Somerville on that point. So this is sort of where we uh, internally came up with as our, our outline, and again, sort of with in order of priority in our areas of research. Um, but we wanted to kind of bring this back to the general board to get your feedback if this matches what you all think would be most helpful before we go off and spend a bunch of time kind of doing a lit review in something that turns out not to kind of match the board's uh, priorities. So uh, lastly, I will just say that once our, we decided, let's kind of bring it back to the group. And once we've gotten your feedback, then we will meet again to kind of start to um, divvy up some of these areas and, and try to pull together some resources. And, and as we have uh, uh, data to share, results to share from this, we will you know report back to the group. Cynthia. Yeah, thank you so much, Jenna. And um, just want to make sure I heard you right. Your your little toe dip of toe in the water indicates that um, there is stuff out there that we can apply to our situation in terms of data research. Uh, there is a lot of research out there. Um, I absolutely. Um, I think my point was that what our, our initial toe dip suggested that the research focuses either on how do you get uh, a more represented population to run for office, or how do you create a more uh, satisfactory environment for people who are going to kind of participate in giving public comment or joining a charrette or something like that. There's less research about how do you get representation in board and committee service in that volunteer capacity. So there's a lot of kind of related, but not exactly identical research. So there's also a great body of literature about representation on nonprofit or corporate board service. But this particular, how do you get good representative populations on civic boards and commissions in a volunteer capacity didn't immediately jump out as having a lot of data specifically. But I think our takeaway was we feel like there's still a lot to be learned from each one of those areas that we can then sort of feed back as relevant. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, highlight that because I'd hate to have you going down all those rabbit holes yeah. <laughs> and, and spending that amount of time. Um, yes, we, we feel the same. But yes, yeah. we feel like there is some some good stuff out there to be learned. Cool. Thank you. When? Thank you. 
Well, I mean, I'm just thinking about what happened in Los Angeles. Um, I wonder what those board members would have said, you know, if we if somebody had done that, the, this sort of research, but that is a researchable thing, you know, like, you know, there's so much shifting and changing right now in these times. Um, obviously, you know, it has to do with discrimination, but we're also seeing, you know, a lot of political madness out there. So that's just a thought I had. In terms of um, the Amherst case study, are you saying that there's that there's a specific Amherst situation that that you found, or that is that something that is locally known? Or my understanding. Uh... We talked briefly about Springfield, Somerville, and Amherst as, you know, local communities that in one way or another have been trying to uh, address some piece of this. I think in the case of Amherst, I think there were two things. One, they there was some news there recently, I think over the late summer around them having trouble getting people to join boards and getting um, sort of a healthy competition and, and representation on boards. And I believe that they also are compensating some board members um, in Amherst. Um, so, and then um, in Somerville and Springfield, there are, I um, don't know a lot about Springfield yet, but I think Javier was talking about it at the last meeting or one a, a recent meeting. So um, yeah, I think to the extent that we can sort of find out what other local communities have been have been doing, um, we will report back on that as well. I think I think I also heard that Belcher Town was struggling to get people into to um, have people serving as well. I'm just mm. out there. Thanks. Well, you know, I mean, do you remember that when we have the election last time, they were having travel finding people to run for a school committee in Northampton. Yes. So there is, it's a- uh, Yes. And I love uh, when that you mentioned the, you know, the scandal in LA. Yeah. In the sort of the recordings, uh, you know, now that the former city council president, you know, the Latinos and the blacks and whatever they were talking right. about. Um, and in relation, so the only, the only, as far as I know, the only the only town slash city that is compensating people serving in any in some capacity, it's Amherst. Um, none of the other are doing that, right? So, mm. yeah. Cynthia. Um, to Gwen's point, and I, I I'm not saying I'm suggesting this, but um, I never thought on December twenty eighth. 2021 at my board of health meeting, there'd be 150 people there, many of whom had Jews will not replace us, anti-Semitic, anti-racist um, right. um, Zoom tiles. And, and right. I'm and it was just like blew us away, right? And our, we were just we were discussing masks. But um should we have a question that says, does the current political um, climate um, um cause you to question whether or not you want to serve on, on committees. Now we might be raising an issue that people, respondents haven't even thought of um, as we talk to the general public, but um, um, since we're, we're serving people who are already on committees, it's just an interesting dynamic that is now, we're now faced with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's just how it is now, it seems. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was thinking about that and I was thinking about, you know, there's, you know, people have changed uh, through the last five or seven years um, a lot. Like, you know, I've had to let a lot of people go because they became radicalized. <laughs> you know, like, it's almost like I want to ask, you know, like, have any of your, you know, have you noticed that anybody, has anyone you've been, uh, you know, working with, 
you know, appear, I don't know, I don't know, we maybe we can't ask those questions, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're just living in these interesting times right now for our democracy, and it's like we have to start at home, and we can't, like, it's exactly, I, Cynthia, I was at that meeting, and I was, I was witness to seeing, you know, people putting, putting up things, you know, like putting up the symbol of, um, you know, Nazism, and, and, you know, people saying that, you know, the Board of Health was committing experiments on them, and, you know, it just is like, you know, it is scary, but it's it's really concerning. It's deeply concerning, you know. So, um, you know, I'm just throwing it out there because it's so hard to ignore that at this point. Thanks, Wayne. So, Jenna, in relationship to the... Um, how online resources such as Zoom have promoted or inhibited diversity. So there are a couple of layers in relation to that. So after Baker established exceptions to the open meeting law to be able for, you know, bodies across the Commonwealth to be able to bypass certain essential norms of public meeting laws so they would be able to meet over Zoom, the Massachusetts Municipal Association uh, the ACLU and other groups, they had been trying to pass different modifications to the open meeting law. So after the exceptions that Baker established, those were gonna rule again. So we go back to a pseudo normality where people still have access over Zoom, right? And one and one of the things, and I don't, I've, I've, I don't know if you saw it, but one of the big changes in relationship to accessibility with Zoom was the fact that um, two years ago, the Northampton City Council would have 500 people coming for public speaking uh, during the budget process in June, right? Even the last time, last year, was around 120 people. Um, there have been instances of cities cutting public speaking time because it's way too many or taking unilateral decisions when they allow, you know, what kind of a speech they allow or not, right? So what would be interesting to take a look is the fact that we, when we were talking about being able to serve, we were talking about the privilege of having the time to draw, to get out of work, drive to the municipality or whatever the body it's meeting. But now a lot of people are not talking that, you know, not everybody has internet. Or not, or even if somebody has internet, you need to have a pretty decent connection to be able to do it. If you live in the hill towns, it gets really complicated. If you live in Nashville, it's just, I don't know what you're gonna do, right? So I'm interested in possible in-kind uh, help for members to be able to serve. Because from the point of view of the city solicitor, the city cannot pay people. And if, because I mean, they, no, let me backpedal that. The city can pay people, but they would pass to be part of, of, of municipal workers. And to be able to make that change, the city would have to have to pass a home room petition. And that home rule petition has to go to Boston to the legislature to get approved. So it's a, it's a lot of a long process. Um, and we know, I know for, by uh, firsthand that members of uh, some commissions in Amherst receive compensation, right? So I think it's extremely useful to, to be able to look in that. But also, it also sucks the fact that this Zoom accessibility is so new that there's not a lot around in relationship to how much impact it's doing. Because, you know, when we're talking about somebody's curse with kids, uh, you know, before you wouldn't be able to get to your house and leave because they were you know, around. Now I know people that they want to be in the meeting because they are interested in what is being spoken. They just tune in with their phone or the computer and they put it in a speaker and they keep doing whatever they are doing, sort of a, almost like a radio stuff, which is still is incredibly accessible. When? There's a lot of meetings that I can could probably not go to in person because there's parking limitations or whatever. I know a couple of moms that 
you know, they just go to these meetings and then they, they, they turn it on and they listen to it while they're dealing with their kids. Um, so, and also, I mean, I'm pretty sure that having things like this, you know, the reason we, that, that, that Northampton continues to be in support of keeping meetings online is because so many more people became involved. You know, it was really wonderful to see so many people involved. I mean, yes, it had its downfalls, but at the same time, more people are able to come. So I, I, I don't know, but yeah, that's what I would say about that. Perfect. Do you feel, Gina, that that's useful? <laughs> yes, that is all useful. I mean, I think what I'm hearing is that these are all kind of worthy questions and, and will um and that we shouldn't go too, too far down a rabbit hole if it doesn't feel uh you know readily applicable to this circumstance um so we'll we'll get a start and um yeah continue to report back thanks for your feedback thank you so much cynthia have you talked to gary about uh sort of towards the end of february uh public speaking event yeah so um uh, so everything I'm about to say is um, Gary has acknowledged receipt upon, but we have not had that conversation. Yeah. Um, so um, thank you for saying February, Javier, I was, and this is, it doesn't really matter. I, I was proposing a couple of dates in January, but February is fine as well. Definitely we're looking closer to earlier in the year. And I was proposing, um, Again, this is what is in my proposal. It's all written out to Garrick, but we really need to chat about it. Um, so having two meetings, um, different times, like try to accommodate the day group, try to accommodate the night group. Um, and um, this is just a suggestion. Instead of having the general public comment kind of meeting, there's another vehicle called the forum and so um, depending on where we're at with this group, we as a committee or the chair, the vice chair presents what we've done so far, what we're looking to do. And hey, public, we wanna hear from you. And so in a forum, you, you set the agenda, you know, this is what we wanna, we wanna hear from you um, about and, um, people will speak at a certain period of time, but we are allowed to engage with the speaker. Um, and that's a key of facilitation. You know, the chair who was ever moderating the meeting would, you know, say this, um, uh, Jamila's up next, we'll give her five minutes or whatever we determine. And Jamila will give her comments and then we will then um, ask questions if we wanted clarification. So we can have a little back and forth. So that's the forum versus the general comment where we, two minutes and next person. Um, but that's all up to you all to decide if that's what you're interested in. My biggest fear is that we'll build it and they won't come. And so we've got to figure out the way to publicize, you know, and that's one of the things I really want to spend some more time with Derek on because we do have city councilors that have really cool email blast newsletters to their constituents. I mean, I think there's ways to do it within the city. Uh, that's only one way. Um, and how to get to the full membership of, of individuals that are eligible is just gonna be the challenge, right? Um, so again, full disclosure, that's where we're at. Um, Garrick and Garrick's had some personal stuff he's had to deal with, so hopefully we can get together soon and begin to flush out something, put some more meat on those bones. Um, but are we thinking more of a February meeting based on our little fits and starts? Because we can kind of move in that direction as well. Perfect. Yeah, and we, I mean, we talked last, last meeting about sort of pushing it down, right? Excellent. Uh, Oh, we're almost done, 50 more minutes. So I wanna use, um, so I'm gonna table discussion about our outreach uh, for next meeting, if that's okay with everybody. Everybody nodding, thumbs up, excellent. And new business, this is uh, specific to our extension request. 
So for us to be able to vote in the extension request has to um, be on the agenda. So that's going to be one of the agenda items for next meeting. Um, for new business, I just want to gauge uh, for you guys an idea of how much of an extension we're asking for. Uh, I'm assuming that if the pulling speaking engagement uh, uh, event or forum is going to happen in February, we're talking at least March. Is that right? And just I'm literally using this to just for me to gauge so I can I can come out with a concrete proposal in the next meeting. Okay. Um March, the end of March or probably the end of March. Okay. I'm just thinking maybe until April 15th, but I don't know. I would be fine. <laughs> I just would to, be fine. Just to sort of, you know, like ask more and then maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. so have a cushion of time. Yeah. So for the sake of time, uh, would, and we're not voting, this is for my own entertain, so I have it ready to go in the next meeting. Would you guys entertain uh, an extension until April 15th if gets sort of um, suggested? Because, okay, because the process, let me tell you, because I, maybe I should start with this. So the process is that we make a formal, uh, we write a formal petition, we vote first, we approve as a committee the, the request for an extension, and that gets uh, sent to the city council, where uh, I have been recommended that me, Garrick, and Jamila, mostly because Gary and Jamila are gonna be there, <laughs> and they are city council members, uh, just presented to the city council who we have to coordinate because when I go there, they have to have an agenda item specifically about the extension so they can put it on the table. That's the reason why I'm gonna gauge our, uh, our availability and willingness to the extension so I can coordinate a little bit when they are putting in their own agenda. Excellent, so I think that's... Uh um, Javier, I think that I think um, something we can consider. Um, we have a lot of things we're doing, um, and I think of the research project. I think of the forum. I think of the survey, send out, collate data, discuss, and then interviews, etc. We might want to do a timeline because if we present something to city council and they're like, "Well, what what are you doing?" and we can just say, "These are all these. This is our plan." And then so, I think that would be more amenable. So 2025? <laughs> can you can you imagine that? No, no. It also, joke. joke. When? It it also occurs to me that like, I mean, you know, we can't control other people all the time, but it might take people time to respond to these surveys. And then we would still want to have time to um, you know, I I don't know, maybe. I, I like the idea of a timeline. Okay. Um, so let's do something. I'm going to draft a sketch of a timeline. Um, and I'm going to present that timeline in the next meeting when we're voting. And because we, we start with a timeline, we're going to tweak it a little bit and they say, okay, is this ready for vote? Yes, it's ready. Okay, let's vote it rather than coming out of nowhere. Is that okay with everybody? Timeline. Okay, excellent. Cool. Um, excellent. Is it, uh, let me check here. Excellent. Is there anything else that we're missing or we need to? And also for the next agenda, so the next agenda item we have um, extension and voting for extension, 
Megan Pye from the Human Rights Commission coming to talk to us in deep, in deep into what they are working and the document that they are producing. Cynthia, it would be beautiful if you can talk to, what's his face? I told Gary. Him. Yes, uh, if, if he can come. Yeah, uh, if he, I'm sorry, if, I jumped if, the gun. No, if, um, what's his name? He, court? It, the court. Yeah, uh, um, interesting, I invited him to this meeting thinking that, but um, I hadn't heard anything, so, yeah. um, I, you know, so um, the next meeting actually is the eighth, um, because this was a special meeting. Yeah. So is that the meeting we're thinking of? Yes. Okay. I'll give it another shot. That's the best that we can do. Excellent. So um, just summarizing, Jenna, I'm gonna have for you the the final like uh, adding the tweaks that we talked today about the the um the form for you to finalize that uh we're inviting megan pike to come to talk to us hopefully court and we're gonna also be talking about uh the extension voting the extension and forms concrete forms of outreach that we're tabling today is that correct excellent um maybe and maybe just a committee update report if needed that that's that that's gonna that's gonna go every single meeting Okay, good. Thank you. And not uh, that there's a requirement, but just put it on the agenda. Yes. No, yes. Absolutely. Excellent. So I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Third. Beth. Javier. Yes. Camilla? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Gwen? Yes. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. And Jenna? Yes. It passes with five. We're out of here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.